Nefer to Wajuh Wahed. Good morning, everyone. This is Shahur Amun Wahed Asha Yawum Yawum Shil Anu. That's the third month of Amun, 11th day, uh, first day of the five day week, which is Anu. So this is Murhuta Nudimun Kahagadu El. And um, this is just me talking about different subjects that I've been seeing on YouTube and I guess in my life that I've been coming across and um, and seeing on TV. So uh, by this no means a, a, a national publication or uh, to be taken, um, well, I guess everything could be taken politically, right? So, um no, nah, I just want to talk to y'all for a minute because I've been seeing uh, a lot of things on the on the internet uh, as far as Nuwabians, uh, Sabaeans goes, um, and we all know the difference, I guess, in doctrine there. And um, some folks saying that uh, you know uh, you, you're not following the Lamb wherever he goes. Um, Though we're always with the Lamb, even as United Nawabi Nation of Moors, he's the one who basically created it. Um, so we we never leave Dr. Malachi Ziyar El behind, man. Baba, uh, Baba Yanun or uh, Amanubi Rahkata or Murduk. Um, we would never take him out of our hearts and our minds. So that's... Uh, we're just... Well, I'll just speak for myself. I'm I'm just not sure um, that Anu is just a flesh-eating reptilian when Anu is the most high. And I'm hearing a lot of uh, student teachers say that, uh, you know, that uh, when they talk about the Abrahamic religions, that Abraham was... Uh, basically a Caucasoid, basically a Persian Caucasoid. Um, but Chaldea is not Persia. And you also see that before the, because Persians are Russians, right? Every, I mean, Nuwabians should know that. And Sabaeans should know that Persians are Russians. And, um, and Abraham is from basically Sumeria. And we all know that Sumeria were, <laughs> were, nine ether beings, right? Any archaeologist will tell you that, yes, Sumerians Ch and Chaldeans were Moors or black or I think they say Negroid land or, I mean, if you say Negroid land, you might as well say nigger land because it, it, it means the same thing, right? So I, I, I'm not understanding uh, the incarnations that uh, Dr. Eric's having. I'm just not understanding it. Because if the bones are in the ground, right, if our ancestors' bones are in the ground in Sumeria and they've dug them up and they've done carbon dating and used their technology to say, you know what, this person is a Negroid. I would say a Moroid, but they say Negroid. Then how is Abraham a Caucasoid? You know that I I don't understand that I don't understand that that, that doesn't and why would an Egypt why would people in Tamaray accept this Caucasoid and give him a wife if he didn't look nothing like them that's uh that's just the question this is a question I have and that makes me uh it makes me doubt a little bit you know what I'm saying the love is still there of course it's still there for uh, Dr Malachi Z or L but I don't I'm being honest, I don't understand that, right? If you're looking at all these books, and all these books are saying, yes, the Sumerians were Moors. Basically, were Moors. Uh, I don't see why you would, um, I don't know, disregard that or, um, you know, I, I, I don't understand. I don't understand. Um, and... And another fact is when the Bible talks about Elam or Elam, the, the uh, Elamites, those were also Moors. They occupied the land before they were moved out by the Russians because, remember, Russia was Prussia. 
which is a mix of Persian and Russia. They called it Prussia. When those people migrated west um, into what you call modern-day Iran, there was, first the land was called Elam and the Elamites. And that's where our people were, right? Okay, that's where our people were. And going centuries, uh, uh, you know, uh, looking ahead in centuries, like in uh, the 6th or 7th um, A.D., you're going to read in a book by Dr. Wesley Muhammad, who is part of the Nation of Islam, uh, peace to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Um, you're going to see that, I forgot what the book is called, um, it's not called God's Black Prophets. It's called, I forgot. But you're going to see where uh, Saladin went into uh, Persia, right, and conquered them, right, and turned. That's why Iran is Islamic to this day because in 6th or 7th or uh, AD, 6th or 7th AD, his army went in there and conquered everybody and converted all the people who were Zoroastrians into uh, into Islam, and and you'll read in some of the papers that they hated their black skin. They hated how they just hated the Persians. I mean, not the Persians, but the Iranians, just or Persians. You can call them Persians. They just hated our black skin. Hated. I mean, you want to see racism? Look at this book. But we did kick kick their butt for a minute. You know what I'm saying? But then for the next couple hundred years. They always plotted to turn Islam into a, uh, a, a the images into Caucasoid images, and they've been planning it for hundreds of years. Um, if I remember the name of that book, I'll tell y'all. But and to say that Islam belongs to them, well, that them is us, right? Pure Islam, that was us, right? And then they changed it, flipped it, bounced it on some bull. And now you have what you have today. You have uh, Negroes um, and Sunni Islam members praising a Caucasoid Muhammad, right? They're, I think they even stop. They say Allah, but they really praise Muhammad, right, who, who is Musaylimat. Even though I see articles on the Internet saying that, you know, Musaylimat is known as the great liar, they don't know that they're still believing in him when they read their mistranslation of the Quran. So, and I'm not saying I'm an expert. I'm just going by what I've researched and uh, and what I know. You know what I mean? And my, I guess you can call it my confusion about uh, the Nawabu doctrine. You know, um, it's the the incarnations that Pop is having is it. It's kind of th it's throwing me off, and I've been watching the NWPU channel going back a couple couple years, um, watching the um, the the outformation or the letters that Pops is writing from prison. Um, you know, the beginning of 2019, they came out with a letter saying that um, you know we're not Nawabians or Nawapians, we're Sabaeans, which is cool, man. I got I got no problem with it. I don't, I don't have a problem with it because I was like, if they're using the B or the P in Nawabian, it's still the same word. Y'all still, to me, you're still under the U, N, and M. But now they've drawn a hard distinction, which is cool, man. I mean, I still learn from the brothers. The brothers are very well learned. They, they're learning well. It's cool. It's just the difference in evidence. I say evidence because... Nowhere in the Sumerian stone tablets does it say that Anu created human beings just to eat them. And I'm talking about from the Sumerians themselves, right? Because that's who I'm cross-referencing for the information, the Sumerian tablets themselves. You know, now if they said they created the Lulu Amelu to work and then after they're done working, we're just going to eat them, right? We're just going to eat them. But nowhere does it say that that we're just going to eat them in the Sumerian stone tablets. You know, the people, our, our ancestors, yes, I'm saying our ancestors, because they were what you call black. I have many books on it. So, it, you know, um, I think the brother's name is uh, 
Mbatu Anu, and he wrote books on it. There's many other archaeologists who wrote books about the skeletal findings uh, on the dig sites, at the excavation sites, and will tell you that the Sumerians, yes, were Moors. So there's no dispute. That's not a dispute anymore. So to say that they weren't Moors, now you have an uphill battle because you would have to prove that the bones, which have our DNA in it, really do not have our DNA in it. So that's an uphill battle for the uh, Sabaean brothers right there. That's why uh, a lot of Nuwabians, this we're not understanding where this is all coming from. And there's no knock on anybody. You know, I hear them try to use verses from the Bible. Um, Leviticus, we know Leviticus is like a horror book, right? It's it's for the Levi priest and, the, you know, the cutting goats and putting animals on altars. But that goes to say that where do you think barbecuing came from? It's a burnt offering. People just don't know that they're doing it, right? My, I grew up doing it. You know, my family from Compton used to come out to the house and barbecue. Uh, we barbecued at the house in the Walnut, West Covina, California. We just barbecued. You know what I'm saying? We didn't know we are doing a burnt offering. We had no idea. Um, these things are revelations to us recently. So to, you know, to say that, um, you know, that Anu is just a flesh-eating reptilian, he still had great power, you know. A, a, a person who can command, command the build of a, a Nibiru which is the size of a planet. I mean, <laughs> these, this is a, a being of great feats, right? Um, you know, and to, and to make us. You know, I'm not, you know, and I, I'm hearing this new word, Natharu. I'm not really familiar what that is. Um, I know the Anunnaki is not a race. So when I hear people say, oh, oh, he was, uh, he was part Anunnaki. How could you be part Anunnaki when Anunnaki was just an event? It's like Hebrew. I mean, you can perform the action. A group of people can perform an action, but that's not what in the essence of what you are. So the question is, what are you? Not what event even spawns you or what event were you part of. So there's a clear line of delineation there. Um, you know, as someone who's the watcher of the nation, I can't, I can't really roll with something when there's no evidence to point it out. So I love our Sabaean brothers. It's cool what they're doing with the language, man. I think that's excellent. Um, we're also doing things with the Nuwabic language and making updates. And I'm hearing a lot of disrespect for us. Um, I don't even think they're Sabaeans. I just think the brothers on Facebook who may be a little confused, they're like, oh, yeah, you got to, you know, put that language down and do the do the new language. I really don't feel like doing that. I'm just going to tell you, I really don't feel like doing that. I have a strong uh, appreciation for uh, Nuwabic culture, and I don't feel like jumping ship on my culture to join something new. New, 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 new. You know, it's Everything that new is not really good, and I'll put an analogy out there. Um, I'm a computer guy, right? I'm a I'm a computer nerd, right? My dad used to work at Computer Science Corporation. I was one of the fortunate black children because my dad didn't gang bang, do none of that stuff in Compton. He was all about money. My dad was all about money. Uh, he raised me as a, as a Christian because we had the Penuel Baptist Church out there in Watts, which my grandfather founded. Uh, back in the 60s uh, off of El Segundo Boulevard. So I grew up in the church. I was going to church from like maybe when I was like two years old, singing in the choir and all that, um, till about 17, 18, and then I didn't want to go to church anymore. I'm like, nah, you know, I'm kind of, I want to live kind of fast and free, right? So... Anyway, back to the computer thing. An analog, strong analogy would be, you know, if you got a computer and you got, um, I won't even say a virus, you just, you want an upgrade, you want an improvement, right? So you take in your foundation 
like your operating system and you're doing like a Windows patch, right, to improve some things. You got security fixes, bug fixes, uh, new lines of code being written by Microsoft engineers that are being deployed, right, worldwide to these computers worldwide from servers anywhere in like Amsterdam, uh, uh, Ireland, because Ireland got good taxes. That's why uh, Apple's there. And you got different locations across the planet where these software deployments are being performed or executed. Uh, some of these software upgrades actually break computers, right? They're not always good upgrades. Yeah, it's new, but was it good, right? Was it good for you and your computer? Because one upgrade on one computer, this is weird because human beings write this, right? So one upgrade on one computer may work, but an upgrade on another computer may brick the whole thing. It may brick a whole office. It may brick a whole company, right? That's why these things are scrutinized. Now, going back to this supposed upgrade of new information, it could break people. I've heard people saying, I've heard, I'm not going to say their names, but I've heard that when the information came out from, from Baba, right, that all knew is this a flesh eating reptilian. There's people who committed suicide, right? There's people who committed suicide because they thought the Anunnaki was coming down there to eat them, right? This was a break in, in an upgrade. In an attempted upgrade, it broke the mind to where people are committing suicide. Uh, that's not good, man. That's that's not that's definitely not the way to go for us as a people. And we just need some more clarification as far as um, you know. All of a sudden, there's there's some new characters, right? They're called the Natharu that are supposedly us, and then all of a sudden, Sumeria is not us. Uh, the land of Elam is not us. Those were all Caucasoids. I think you're giving the Caucasoid a little bit too much credit. I, yeah, I think there's a little bit too much credit for the Caucasoid. Me, I have to go by the archaeological evidence that, yes, Sumeria were Moors, right? The land of Elam were Moors. The land of Kedar, Moors. Prophet Muhammad, Moor, right? Of course, ancient Egypt, ancient Tamare, all Moors, all Moors across the across the planet, right? And uh, Ganawa, when the continent split, North America, South America, Moors, right? They're all Moors. They found bones in South America that were five million years old. And who was it? It was a Moor. So I'm not understanding also how we're disregarding the whole world and just focusing on Nubia, which uh, they're calling Negro land, which is very disrespectful. They're not, they're not Negroes. They're Moors, right? Negro is someone who doesn't have a culture, your chattel property, and you could be made a slave, right? So we definitely want to stay away from this word Negro, nigger, Negroid land, black, colored, African-American, because you can't be African in America. You can't be an African, right? You can't be an African. That's a whole continent. That's like calling me uh, North American. I cannot be a North American because that would mean I'm not a person. I would have to belong to a tribe, a nation, a state. African is not a state. It's a, it's a large landmass, right? So I'm just trying to drill this into your head so when you have some legal issues, not that you did something wrong out of dishonor, because if you dishonor the law, they're going to get you, right? If you break the law, they're going to get you. That's why Dr. Malachi York said, follow the laws of the land that you live in, right? But if they try to get you on some, uh, I'm going to say some bullshit. They try to get you on some bullshit, right? So a law you didn't break, but they're trying to accuse you. That's when you can use the law, right? You know, in your child support cases, uh, uh, not really mortgage anymore. They're getting people that if your house is going to get uh, taken, it's probably going to get taken. But there's a lot of other situations where you can use, especially in family law. Family law is so corrupt, you know, um, I should have a class on that. 
family law is totally corrupt. If your kid's up for grabs, the court wants to make money off you. Then you got to go beg a tomahu or a, a brother who, who has the mind of a tomahu to beg to go see your children because the goddess is acting like a fool, right? She has the potential to be a goddess, but she's acting like a fool. So you can't see your children, right? Right? So, Tua, Tua, you know what I'm saying, Senna? Um, and Senna's brother. Um, it's really a lot of things that we have to deal with today as Moors. Um, however, uh, let me revert back to what I was talking to before about the doctrine. I still buy, I buy the Patarox. I haven't bought any Master Secrets yet. I got the Revelations, the Nuwapian Revelations. Some good stuff in there, man, especially the Revelations about mixing your seeds, sticking with your own, trusting your own. All that stuff, I'm with it. I'm with it. 100% I'm with it. Uh, there's no discrepancy in my mind, you know, where that came from. And oh, a lot of other people are talking about uh, uh, Dr. Malachi Z or L. You know, he's not in prison. He's really out. Um, you know, you would have to prove that too, though. A lot of people just throwing out, speculating, not even inferring, just speculating. That, oh, he's really out. He's really free. Well, you got to prove that. You have to prove it. Either way, you got to prove it. But I've seen some of the letters, I think, um, from the brother, uh, I think, I don't want to pronounce this wrong, but I probably will, Dentut Reye. Um, I've I've seen a letter from him talking about Sabaism, animism, and um, and some of the scrolls I've been reading. Like um, what was the last one I read? Because I had a story, I had a question about you know Tammuz. Who is Tammuz in the in the Bible? And I was reading the scroll of Malachi, page twenty, where he says like Tammuz is not the Jesus from two thousand years ago that had the twelve disciples. It's not Simon Bar Jesus, and it's not Justus Cleophas, the son of Mark Antony and Cleopatra that traveled to India and then to Palestine. And they have his body in India. That Jesus, Justus, they have his body in Kashmir, India. But he said it ain't none, none of those three guys. It's another person, right? And I was watching one of the uh, Mas, uh, Pamus Batu videos, and one brother was saying, if you want to know about the real Tammuz, he said, read um, uh, uh, the the lost time records, the pot, the pot to rock, the lost time records. And uh, no, that's the actual facts. I'm sorry, actual facts. And I read that, and it's all based on symbology and, and, and Shiloh, the one called Shiloh, and that. Um, you got to read. I know some brothers don't want to read that because, like, no, it's not. It's not the old scrolls. But I mean, we're alive, right? So we're alive. We're vibrating. We're moving. You know, if it's pops, man, go ahead and buy the book, man. Go ahead and buy the book. Check it out. Uh, form your own opinion. Don't just go off your emotions. Because if they say pops wrote it, and they the closest people to pops, uh, you got Mario and, and Victoria, who. I ain't gonna say nothing about Victoria. I ain't gonna say nothing, but um, but he's still in there. That's it. I, I'm a person of uh, results. So if he's still in there, she ain't doing something right, right? Because she's been working on the case I don't know how long, and I already got a video about the Ecowas case and how they lost that one. So uh, hopefully Pops does it get out. We all love Pops, man. Um, we're hoping that he can get out and we could see him again, see what he looks like, see what he sounds like, you know, um, we're all concerned for his health, he has anxiodema, and I heard he had an, an attack not too long ago, where his, his throat, his esophagus kind of swells up, so, uh, yeah, man, it's hard to hear stuff like that, brothers and sisters, um, but um, there should be no fighting, you know, on Facebook or anywhere between Nuwabians and Sabians. There should be no fighting at all. 
if you don't agree, disagree to disagree, agree to disagree, and you know, keep it moving. Keep it moving together, though. You know, keep it moving together. Let's let's not practice uh, Africanisms. And African means to divide, right? So, I also don't. You shouldn't be calling yourself an African, right? You know, because every tribe in that continent does not call the continent Africa. In different languages, they may call the continent something else. Dane Calloway had a video on that. They don't call it Negroid land, you know. They don't call it Africa, right? Only those who've been in touch with, like, the Western world may call it Africa. But, you know, they, they identify themselves totally differently than how we're looking at them, right? So that's another thing to keep in mind. What do they call that continent? You know, and I know I'm just I'm just talking today. So there's is this things that are on my mind. This is not a you know these are just things that I feel inside that I need to talk about. And if someone wants to listen, they listen. If they don't, they don't. Um, oh, there's another thing I want to touch up on too. Um, there's a channel called there's a YouTube channel called The Young Elder and Oso Ice that I've recently started peeping out. First, I thought it was kind of cool, the young elder talking about, you know, different planets and stuff and how um, the latest one he came out with today or yesterday was Saturn, how Saturn is the planet of education. And <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where does this say in the black book or the holy tablets or any information that you reference to say that this is true? You know, and I put it in, you know, I put it, you know, I, I put a comment under the video because I'm like, where are you getting this from? Because I don't remember anybody talking about this in the Holy Tablets. So this is another splint off group of the UNM that's going around just talking, I guess. Um, I don't, I don't really draw any affiliation with them. The nation doesn't really draw an affiliation with them. And as far as I heard another brother in the opening of the of a temple in I think Philadelphia on the Palmas Batu channel, somebody asked, you know, who are these Oso oh Ice guys? And he's like, they're like, I don't know. We don't we don't really have any connection with them. They're just another splinter group. Um, and there's another guy called calls himself the real Messiah. Atum. I'm like, yeah, that's that's not true, bro. And he's out of California. I'm like, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't. That's not true. You're not the, you're not the real Messiah. You haven't performed any miracles, right? Um, yeah, he, yeah, I don't. Yeah, he'd have to do a lot of proving, but he gets newbies. You know what I'm saying? People who, who need that, uh, that religious feel. You know, because I'm hearing, you know, I'm hearing people, you know, oh yeah, uh, uh, kick the facts. That's right, brother. Kick the facts. Kick the science, yo. Well, what science? I mean, anybody can make up a Star Wars movie. At least Star Wars got some elements that were derived from something that was real, though. You know, you got uh, uh, the Death Star. Obviously, this is a rendition of Nibiru, right? Yeah. Um, uh, the, the, the Jedi Knights. This is, uh, this is like being a Cosmosan and the Amon. Right, except it's mixed in with fighting styles, so maybe that's part of the AEO. They get that from the AEO. Then maybe they got it from, um, uh, you know, the ones of the green light. You know, it all de it all derives from somewhere, and then they just they fix it up, dress it different, make them speak a little different language, and but it derives from the same source. So, um, you know, got to keep your eyes open for. Ah, I hate to say it. Well, I'm not, I don't hate to say it. The guy's an imposter. He's a straight-up imposter. There's no no other Atum Ray besides um, Dr. Malachi Z. York. And he's still alive, so, you know, you, you're, it's too close in time for you to say that you're the real. Maybe, maybe another Messiah comes around in 100 years or so. Or, but you can't have two Messiahs at the same time. I, I wouldn't think so. But messiahs usually come for their own people, so maybe if multiple nations needed that, you know, needed that messiah to come in and 
and change the minds of the people and get them back on the right track, back to purity, then maybe. I don't know all the rules on messiahship. Um, so, but that's, uh, that guy ain't no real messiah. He just took the teachings and, you know, Pop said in the, of, uh, the Isles of Patmos that, you know, people would take the teachings and, you know, uh, you know, take the logos and do their own thing with it, you know, try to make money off of it or, you know, try, try to convince, um, you know, the, the men would try to convince the women that they're smart or, or they're even smarter than Pops, you know. If you're smarter than Pops, then why you keep using Pops stuff? You know what I'm saying? Give And if you do, give you know, give them credit. Give them credit. So... Those are just some of the things that were on my mind today. I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Uh, this is Murhuda uh, Nudimud Kahagadu El of the United Nawabi Nation of Moors signing off. Peace and love. Wadu.